Hello everyone and welcome to the Mastering Collision tutorial done by Brackies. I am the CEO of Brackies. And in this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the different aspects of collision inside of Unity and in game development in general. And uh, how you can achieve really nice physics and collision effects without being too harsh on your computer. So we're going to take a look at the different methods and uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So for this tutorial, I have prepared a lot of stuff. Um, I have switched my window layout to the wide um, because I want to show you a whole lot of stuff that I've set up. So, um, all right, we're here in my uh, mastering collision scene. And the first thing we are going to take a look at is this. And uh, this is basically just a half sphere, which I have extruded out and a ball that should fall upon it. Let's say that we want to have a game mechanic where this ball simply falls into this half sphere. Well, um, if we just simply take this half sphere, import it into Unity and uh, create a sphere, which we then apply a rigid body, the effect will look something like this. The sphere falls, but it doesn't collide with the half sphere. So um, if we take a look at what components are attached to the different objects, I'll just zoom in on the sphere here. This sphere has a rigid body component. This means that it will interact with different objects in the scene and different laws of physics. For example, the gravity, which we can enable and disable here. There are also other settings like mass, drag, angular drag, and some uh, constraints which will lock the, uh, the positioning and rotation of the sphere in different axes. We ain't going to go into too much detail with this, since this is not a physics tutorial, this is more of a collision. So, um, alright, so we have the rigid body attached, and of course we also have the sphere collider, because if we disable this, it will simply fall through everything, it won't be able to collide with anything. So the collider is what uh, decides um, it's, it's like the shape of the object that will collide and the rigid body is what makes it actually interact in the physics space. So once we have, so this ball is actually uh, working correctly, though there's something wrong with our half, half sphere. And this is because we haven't attached a collider. If we go ahead and click the add component and then physics, we can attach different colliders. Let's try with a box collider. This creates a box around our sphere. Let's go ahead and play the game. Let's drag out the game view so we can see both the scene and the game view. The ball indeed hits the half sphere, but it's, uh, it only rolls off the surface. So this collider simply isn't detailed enough. I'll go ahead and disable this one because I've made a right version, a working version. And let's see what's different. So if we go over here in the right hand side, we can see that I have attached another kind of component. This collider is called a mesh collider. The mesh collider will take the vertices from the real mesh, which means the stuff you actually see in the scene, and make a collider of it. This can be very taxing on your computer if you have many objects with mesh colliders and that if the objects are very detailed. So this will get more and more advanced uh, for the computer to calculate with more uh, the more vertices you have. Um, but this is a way to actually achieve the kind of uh, collision we have here. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if it works. The ball collides and it rolls into the center of our sphere, 
just like it would in real life. So um, that's basically how you would do complex collision. Um, in a moment, we'll also take a look at how to achieve somewhat the same effect, but uh, making it a lot less taxing on the computer. There's one more way to do this. Um, instead of just hitting the add component, then physics, and then importing the mesh collider and choosing which one, you could also simply go to where you imported the mesh. So let's click the half sphere. Under the import settings, there's a box called generate colliders, and this will automatically generate uh, may attach this mesh collider to the object. So for now, let's go ahead and disable this section one and move on to section two. I'll just reposition the camera so we can take a look at section two. Now, uh, we have quite a few things going on here. We have some different boxes, uh, some different planes which our uh, rigid body boxes will then collide with. Let's take a look at how this works with the setup we have. Notice the difference. They are set in the exact same position, in the exact same rotation, with the exact same size of a plane. All the planes have box colliders attached, all of these cubes are exactly the same. They all have a rigid body and a box collider and then of course they are using the gravity. Though there's something different with these other than just the color. These different boxes are using what is called a physics material. You can insert a physics material once it's created under the box collider or just the collider in general right here under the material. In this case, I've inserted a ice material. This means that this plane will from now on interact just like ice. So when I hit the play button, we can see that our box collides and then just slides down because ice is very slippery. If we move on to the next one, I've attached a metal physics material so this will interact just like metal no bounciness no slipperiness and the box just rolls off it and the last one i've attached the bouncy bouncy physics material so when we hit play the cube jumps off just like with a trampoline and this gives a very large control over the, the way that rigid bodies will interact with static objects or other rigid bodies. So um, let's take a look at how you can create these kind of physics materials. First of all, um, if you just want to play around with it and get started, it's a good idea to observe some already uh, created physics material. So um, let's download the uh, standard assets physics material. Right click on the project pane, hit the import package, and here we can hit the physic materials. This will make this folder appear under the standard assets. I've just gone out and dragged it out so we can play with it right here. On the, in this folder, you will find quite a few physics materials. You'll found, find a bouncy one, the one I used on the pink, a nice one the one I used in the first one, a metal one, the one I used in the metal, and then a rubber and a wood. Now, if we select, for example, the bouncy physics material, we have quite a few things to change. The bounciness is set to one. This means that it will be as bouncy as can be. If we change, the, if we drag this down a bit, maybe at 0 0.25, let's see what happens. So the cube does bounce a little bit more than normal, but not all the way. Let's make it 0 0.5. You can see more bounciness starts to appear and so on. You can also adjust stuff like friction, combined friction, combined bounciness, 
the direction of the friction and a lot of other variables. I won't go into too much detail, but um, have fun, play around with it. Uh, you can't, basically you can't do anything wrong, um, but it is a nice addition to the ordinary collision system. So for now, let's go ahead and disable this section. All right, uh, I, I maybe forgot to tell you how you create a physics material on your own. You can simply go to uh, the project pane, hit the create, and then physic material. Um, let's enable the last section I've made. Here it is. And this is a model, I, a very simple box model I created inside of Maya. And uh, this is pretty low poly, though it could have been even uh, simpler. And uh, you, it could always, uh, already, um, it could always be um, more detailed. So keep in mind that the methods we're going to be using here are for more detailed objects, where the mesh collider is simply too taxing on the computer. First, I have a example with collision gone wrong. Let's go ahead and hit play. Maybe just reposition the camera. So we can have a look at what's happening. Hit the play button. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. This should be falling more to the left and a little forwards. Let's take a look, look at what have gone wrong. The collider we have attached to this game object is a box collider. It's not detailed enough. So we could instead attach the mesh collider. This would give beautiful collision. Though this could again be very taxing if this object was more detailed and uh, had a lot of vertices and maybe round shapes. So let's go ahead and disable this and take a look at what I have done instead. So here you can see a very detailed collider that pre uh, pretty much covers the whole object. Let's go ahead and just see if this works by hitting play. Indeed, the weapon or whatever this is collides beautifully with the floor. This is because I have made a series of ordinary colliders and combined them to create a nice working collider shape, which is still not too taxing on the computer. So let's go ahead and focus on the weird shape down here. And if we expand this, I have created a empty game object called colliders. And under this, I've parented all the different colliders I've created. And this is just empty game objects with box colliders attached to them. And together, they create a whole shape around a model. This could also be done with crea by creating a series of other kinds of colliders, you could make empty game objects storing colliders like the sphere collider or the capsule collider. So um, making your own colliders is a good way to still get nice physics interaction without, um, without the computer having to do a lot of work. So that's basically it for the mastering collision tutorial. I hope this was helpful to you. This is an introduction uh, to collision, though it covers pretty much all aspects of creating collision inside of Unity. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.